Hi, welcome to Electronics. Uh, this is for your lower sec uh, DT curriculum. Um, please refer to your notes uh, and uh, you will find that most things are covered from there. Thank you so much. Right, introduction. Uh, electronics is everywhere. Uh, there are examples of electronics in everywhere uh, of our lives. Uh, imagine uh, what happened if world, Second World War were to happen uh, without the use of electronics. Uh, communication will be impossible, uh, the invention of radios will not be there. Uh, imagine uh, ships being 20 kilometers apart from one another, uh, how would they would communicate with one another? All right, they would have used uh, light signals like Morse code, you know, and they can do that. But any thing more than 20 kilometers but, uh, distance apart, uh, you know, the war will not have happened if not for electronics. So electronics is very important. Now, in modern day life, Everywhere we see is electronics, all right? Uh, no matter how complicated they are, they all started with the simple transistor circuits, uh, simple electronic circuits that we will learn today uh, in our electronics uh, lesson. Right, uh, batteries. Battery comes in all shapes and sizes. Uh, they store charge. Uh, they provide power to our electrical uh, devices. Uh, please take note that for TNT, we do not encourage students to use uh, 240 volts because it's uh, pretty dangerous uh, so most of our electronic products are powered with batteries right the user battery the usual battery sizes that we use in the workshops are 1.5 volts or the 9 volts right the one that you see on your uh, left is the triple a uh, battery and the one on your right is the double a battery and the center one is your 9 volt uh, battery okay you look at this simple circuit uh, when the switch, like the, the switch is switched on, what happens to the LED? The LED comes, turns on, right? Resistors are used in circuits because LEDs, uh, they can be destroyed by voltages over 3 volts. So anything above 3 volts, we need to use a resistor. But you look at this particular circuit, uh, why don't we use a resistor? Okay, think about it for a short while. Right, because the answer is, each of the batteries is only 1.5 volts, so we have two of them in series, to give me a total of three volts, and therefore anything below three volts, it's okay to use uh, the LED directly without using a resistor. All right? LEDs are known as a light intermediate diodes. They are rugged, they last a long time, and they are optical source. All right? They are LEDs that are many, many different colors. They can produce different colors like red, green, yellow, orange, okay? And they are used in a large variety of products. So can you name any uh, LEDs being used today? Okay, if you look at it, if you go to the, uh, to the road, you see a lot of traffic lights. Uh, most of our traffic lights down in Singapore are all LED powered. All right, previously it was actually uh, uh, using a light bulb, but now it's all changed to LED. Okay, what about uh, infrared LEDs? Infrared LEDs are used everywhere in our, even in our remote control uh, controllers and all those things. These are all uh, LED, uh, infrared LEDs. Okay, so LEDs are part of a diode family and they must be connected in the right way around so that current will pass. If not, uh, you know, current won't go through. Okay, so what you have here is the LED symbols and uh, if you see the bottom uh, left hand corner, what you see is there's an anode and a cathode, all right. Which, uh, if you look at the center picture, it shows the anode has a longer leg, the cathode has a shorter one. And more interestingly is if you look at the LED directly, uh, the flat there's a flat spot at the bottom, right, where the rim is, and that denotes where the cathode is. Okay. On the right hand side of your the, the picture, you will see that there is the LED symbols, all right. It's basically a diode with the two light rays coming out, which is the, the, the symbol for LED. All right, now you look at this circuit, a simple light LED circuit. Okay, because the battery is 9 volt, therefore you need a resistor in series with the LED. Okay, we cover the topic on switches. Switches are basically uh, a component that allows the two contacts between uh, the circuit to happen and therefore the current can flow, right? It's just a, 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 something to switch on and off the circuit. Okay, the top switch there you see is the push to make switch. Uh, there are a couple of several types. Let's say for example, you know, you look at your fridge, there is actually the button for the door. When you open a door, the lights will come on. This is a push to make uh, switch and it switches on the light when the door of the, uh, the, the fridge is open. There's another type where it's 
when you press, there's a tuk tuk sound, all right, and then the the lights turns on, and then when you press it again, tuk tuk, the light turns off. So that is a different type of push switch. Okay, the bottom picture shows a rocker switch, and uh, basically rocker switch is uh, you can find them in your most of your electrical products. Your light switches are rocker switches. Sometimes you have some where they have a switch on to the forward, and then there's a stop, and then there's a reverse. So it's a rocker switches with three options. Okay, so but most rocker switch that we have is only double fun function, on and off. All right, the toggle switch at the top. These are switches, and obviously, if you look at some uh, movies, you can see airplanes. They have all the lot of series of toggle toggle switches, and at one glance, you can tell that all the switches are on or off okay, by the position that they are in. A uh, slide switch is a very unique one because uh, it's stiff to operate. If you physically have to turn it on or off. And it is available in a, a, a variety of sizes. Uh, sometimes you also it's painted red or, or green in color to show that it's on or off. Okay, so slide switches are used there. All right, micro switches are very small switches. Uh, they normally have a metal arm, which uh, clicks when pressed. All right, and they are used in um, lots of uh, engineering uh, machines as a safety switch. So, for example, if the lid of the drilling machine is open. You want to do some maintenance when the 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 lid is open. The micro switches is detected that hey, you know that the 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 door is open. Therefore, that no power can be powered on. All right, the 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 drilling machine will not turn on. Once you close the lid, the switch is closed, and then the power can be powered on. All right, the drill can then operate operation. The fourth one we have here is uh the membrane switches. These are found in banks, ATM, computer keyboards. All right, there are three layers. The bottom layer, which is the bottom membrane layer, the on top of the bottom membrane layer, there are the conductive traces, which are metal surfaces. All right, the center you have the holes. This is where the buttons can be pressed, and on top of that, there's the top membrane layer, which on the top, on the bottom of the top membrane layer, there's also the conductive traces. So in between, normally there are two gaps, and they are not pressed, so there's no contact. But when you press the top, the top, the the conductive traces at the top layer will come down and come in contact with the bottom layer, uh, the conductive traces, and therefore may have a contact, and therefore you know that there is a contact, and therefore the switch is closed. All right, so this is uh, a way you can tell the membrane switches works. All right, very effective. Uh, similar, you can actually think about the the lift door. If you keep pressing the door, all right, the yeah, the switch is turned on and off. All right, series circuit. You look at the series circuit. You have three bulbs, A, B, and C, and the current will flow through the series. Now, is it possible to add so many bulbs that the bulb, the the circuit doesn't light up? Is it will is possible, right? What happened if bulb A is blown? All right, the circuit will now not flow. It's not closed, and therefore the whole circuit will not work. Correct. So that is a series circuit. You have learned this in your primary school. Right in parallel circuit, the three of them will run, and if one of the bulb is blown, the other two uh, bulb will still work. And this is a better one, which is uh, what we normally use in our home uh, lighting circuit. Okay, you look at this circuit. This we have two motors and two two bulbs. What happens if one of the motor is blown? Will the whole circuit still work? Answer is yes. All right, the current can flow through the other motor. What happens if one of the bulb is blown. This case here, if bulb A is blown, the whole circuit will fail. It won't work. What happens if both motors are blown? Then the whole circuit will also fail. So as long as you don't see a clear flow of a clear uh, direction to for the electricity to flow, the whole circuit will fail. All right. Now that's the end of the electronics uh, portion. Uh, we have a series of mini projects for you to do. Please look at the uh, videos uh, for more information. Thank you so much. What we have here are the tier two videos on soldering, uh, which you can actually refer to to get more information on how to do a proper soldering uh, job.